Okay, everybody, I'm going to try and keep us on time. And uh, so if you can find your way back to your seats, we'll move along. No, 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 I was just saying hi to Ann. <laughs> okay, everybody. All right, so um, for our next presentation, I'd like to introduce uh, Kristen Mueller. Uh, Kristen is our impact analyst at Open SUNY. Um, and in this role, she evaluates the effectiveness of Open SUNY services, analyzes how online learning impacts SUNY's overall goals, and develops ways to share data to inform the continuous improvement of SUNY's online learning practices. Um, she is here today to uh, talk to us about what our data tells us and to share with you, um, if you haven't yet had the opportunity to see them, the dashboards that she has created that we can all use to sort of look at, um, you know, where we are uh, in terms of lots of different metrics um, uh, concerning um, Open SUNY and online teaching and learning. So Kristen, I'd like to um, have a warm welcome for Kristen. All right, thank you, Alex. Um, so I have the privilege and honor of talking to you today about the exciting topic of online learning data, right? All of your, your favorite things. Um, so online learning data, uh, the collection of it and the analysis of it is actually relatively new, um, even though online learning has existed for decades. There are a lot of questions about the data and work that needs to be done in terms of making sure we're collecting uh, accurate data that's going to help us make informed decisions. So I'm going to run through um, some slides to share with you some of the sources of data that we currently have uh, and share some examples of that data and also like Alex said I'm going to show you the campus dashboards which we created to share the data that we have at the SUNY level back with campuses so you can get an idea of what your data is if you're not already aware or to see if there are any potential data inaccuracies that we can help to correct. Uh, so uh, toward the end, we'll have a discussion about those two aspects, data accuracy and also how we can use the data. So one of the uh, primary sources of data nationally is iPEDS. And you're all probably pretty aware of iPEDS data that is collected on a regular basis, submitted usually through your institutional resource offices to iPEDS. And so I want to just briefly touch on some of the elements that are collected through iPEDS that pertain to online learning. The first are um, in the in institutional characteristics survey. It literally just says, does your campus um, provide uh, any or offer any online courses or distance education courses and or programs? And is that at the undergraduate or graduate level or both? So that's sort of a broad piece just about your institution. Then there is a uh, survey that's done about completions. So it asks about the number of completions uh, uh, within each SIP code, which is a code based on um, a discipline, which is sort of kind of aligned with occupation. So that, that SIP code and by program level, it asks how many students completed in programs that align with each SIP code. So you actually may have multiple, multiple programs on your campus that align with the same SIP code. So for, say, for instance, you have a business, you have several iterations of a business program. All of those probably align, so that would be aggregated. Um, and you basically say how many students completed uh, those programs that align with that SIP code and at what level. And also by ethnicity and gender. And then all you would do, uh, and again, you're not doing this, but your institutional research folks are checking a box to say, is this program offered online? Or any of the programs within that SIP code offered online? So. I, and I say this just because it means that it's a little tricky for us at the national level to really say how many online programs there are. We know how many SIP codes might be 
covered by online programs, but it's, it's a little <coughs> tricky. The data is not very accurate. So not, not accurate, it's just not very precise. Um, and then there's the enrollment piece, and that's the piece uh, we'll talk about a little bit more today. And that asks for each campus um, how many students, and this is in the fall term, the fall term specifically, so that's why in Larry's presentation we were talking about fall term data. And that asks specifically how many students do you have who are taking exclusively um, online courses, so they're only taking online courses, and how many students do you have that are taking some but not all of their courses online. Uh, and if you were to add those together, that's where you'd get that at least one online course number. Uh, so iPEDS is asking for those numbers, and then for the exclusively online students, they dig a little bit deeper by asking about student level and residency. So those are the items collected in iPEDS uh, pertaining to distance education or online learning. And that data is used in quite a few national reports and also used for some state reporting. So I just wanted to make sure you're all aware of that. So like the Digital Learning Compass, you're all probably familiar with that. The data that's being pulled into that report is from iPEDS. Um, this is where we're getting that 30% of students took at least one online course in, 2000, in fall 2015 number from. So that's this report. There's also state reports, again, coming from iPEDS data. This is just a snapshot of the New York report, which was written, again, by the same authors as the Digital Learning Compass. Um, and all of these reports are publicly available for you. Uh, and you might look at this chart and wonder if it's accurate. I'm not sure. Um, but that, you know, that's something we can continue to look into. Uh, so again, that, that's based on iPEDS data. There are also several national surveys that exist, so I just picked a couple as examples. One is the CHLOE, the Changing Landscape of Online Education Report. There was the most recent report was from 2017, so there are several questions about how online learning is being facilitated at campuses. Again, that's a survey. And another survey I found from 2015 is Recruiting, Orienting, and Supporting Online Adjunct Faculty. Again, you might be aware of this survey already, but just want to put that out there that those are additional data sources. So then we have the SUNY data, which is what I'm primarily concerned with looking at because that's what I have um, access to to try to understand the impact of online learning for SUNY. So we have a couple different sources. Again, uh, the primary source is uh, student term section data, which is data that's collected, again, through, it's provided by institutional research or the registrar office that goes up to SUNY through a system called Cirrus. And the data that's collected in that, um, in that report are, is data concerning all of your course sections that are offered on your campus. And within that data, there's an element called online course section indicator. So for every course that you have on your campus, is this course um, asynchronous or is it synchronous? Is it combined asynchronous and synchronous? Or, um, or is it hybrid or is it not online? And so what we're considering an online course at SUNY when we're doing calculations is we're considering asynchronous, synchronous, and combined. We are not counting hybrid courses as fully online courses because they're not fully online courses. Um, and obviously, if it's flagged as not online, we're not counting that either. Uh, within student term section, there are, there's also data about student demographics and their term enrollment status. And we also introduced, just in this last term, a new student population code called Student Online Intent. So what that is uh, designed to collect data about is whether or not a student is intending to take their program fully online. Okay, so I'll talk about that a little bit later, um, but that is something new that we're, we're trying to collect, and I'll explain a little more about that later. And then, of course, um, information about how many sections a student has taken, how many credits uh, did they attempt, how many credits did they earn, what their grades were, and, and so on and so forth. So that's all in Cir uh, collected through Cirrus in the student term section data. We also have records about academic programs. We have a database at SUNY called APES, and that's for academic programs. And so, as you know, in order to be, um, uh, in order to facilitate a program online, you have to be approved through SUNY and through NYSED. And that approval through New York State means that the program can be, um, can be completed by a student at least 50% online. So that's that online, that distance education format um, approval. So we know in our database if a program has been approved for that. 
And we also know if it's an Open SUNY Plus program or not, because that's something that Open SUNY would have facilitated. So we have that indicator in there as well. We also have faculty data, so we know who the faculty are, what their ranks are, some demographics. And then because we can connect the faculty to that student term data, we know um, how many course sections faculty members are teaching online. And then we have the student opinion survey, which asks a variety of questions, but there are also a couple items on the student opinion survey about online learning. Then the next source of data I want to talk about is Open SUNY data. So we also collect data through Open SUNY. We have our website, open.suny.edu, which, as you know, um, has all of our online programs listed and online courses. And through our partnership with Rankoo, we've been increasing the amount of leads or student inquiries that we've been um, getting through the website. We've been sharing that back with campuses. But that's a source of data for us, as well as Google Analytics on you know, how many hits the website is getting, things like that. We also have um, data you know, concerning the contracts that we have for services that Open SUNY provides. We've done some surveys, some satisfaction surveys, and some informational surveys, and lots of other data collection efforts. Um, and there's just a couple examples um, listed there. We also have the Open SUNY student and faculty longitudinal surveys that Alex um, and the COTE team and, and Peter Shea have been facilitating uh, for the past many years. Um, so that's another data source that exists. So those, there's also campus data sources, which I'm going to talk about later. But what I want to focus on are the, um, the SUNY and the Open SUNY data sources, because those are what primarily um, generates the data that's shown in the campus dashboards. So um, as you'll see on this slide, most of the visualizations on the Open SUNY dashboards are using data that is um, that's through that, that SUNY, um, SUNY-wide data collection effort. And it's accessed through the SUNY business intelligence system, and that's where I pull the data from and then share it back with you in these visualizations. There are a couple visualizations that are based on open SUNY data, so specifically about student, the student recruitment piece, right, the rank coup piece, our online programs. Um, so like I said before, we do have um, APES, which is the academic programs database within SUNY, and that uh, has an indicator of all the programs that have been approved for distance education format. But we also have our own list within Open SUNY, which, is, which are all the programs that we're promoting on the Open SUNY website. So when I go to the um, Open SUNY programs visualization, it's actually based on the, the programs that are being um, highlighted on our website, rather than the full list of everything that's ever been approved for distance education. And all the visualizations are interactive, um, and we want you to use them. So when I start to show them, if you want to you know, play around with them, and obviously after this, please do play around with them. Uh, there are a lot of filters. You can click different um, buttons and, um, and focus on your campus specifically, or other types. Of, you can break things down by different types of demographics. Click around as much as you want. You can't break them. Um, there is even a reset button at the bottom. So if you, you know, get yourself really <laughs> um, you know, into different filters, you can always reset it. So, Click around. You cannot break it, I promise you. Um, so yeah, just want to put that disclaimer out there. So uh, some of you are already aware of this website, but some of you, this may be new to you. Um, so commons.suny.edu slash opensuny slash dashboards. So if you have a device in front of you and you want to go to the website and bookmark it or email that address to yourself, I encourage you to do so. Um, or even if you just want to open it up and look along with me, you can. And this is our Open SUNY website that was created for information for faculty and staff and for campuses. So that's where this information is housed. And right now, it's really just a list of links of all the different dashboards. I'm hoping in the future we can make it a little more pretty. But right now, um, it does provide you all the information, so it is functional. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to exit out of the PowerPoint and go to this website. And I'm going to go through all the different visualizations that exist. Um, if you're if you had seen it previously, you may actually notice that there are some changes. I added some additional visualizations, and I made some modifications to some that were already existing based on your feedback. So I'll just do that now. I'll just go through. I'm going to open up. And hopefully, Tableau cooperates with me. All right. So here you see all of the different visualizations that we have. I'm just going to open them up one at a time. The first one is. Open SUNY Campus Info. So it's actually something that we were using first as uh, an internal dashboard for Open SUNY staff, but then we decided it might be useful to all of you to see what different campuses are doing. So 
Um, let's see if I can make this full screen. Great. So this has a list of all the campuses. It says whether or not the campus is open to any plus, whether or not you're contracted with the help desk or application services, what LMS you're using, what LMS host you're using. As you can see, 44 of our campuses are on Blackboard Learn. Um, six of them are on Moodle, two, uh, three are on Moodle Rooms. You can see that, you can see who is, um, uh, you know, contract with the help desk and application services. So this one's pretty straightforward. You can filter by campus, campus type, whether or not a campus is open to me plus. So again, you might be able to use this just to see what other campuses are using your LMS or something like that. Yes? Where is this data pulled from? So this is a spreadsheet that we are maintaining um, through Open SUNY. If it is wrong, can if I If it is you? wrong, you can let us know. Okay. Yeah. And that's why we're sharing with you too, because <laughs> there could be things that are wrong. And we want to make sure we correct those. So this is something that, um, that we update on a monthly basis as we get new information. And sometimes we don't always know. Like you may, there are 64 campuses, right? So if you changed your LMS or you changed something and we weren't aware, then we might, this might not be accurate. So we definitely welcome any corrections that you have for us. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Great. OK. Sounds pretty straightforward. Online recruitment. So again, online recruitment is pulling data from the leads that we receive through open.suny.edu. And these leads are funneled through to your campuses as we receive them, but we also still have the full list of the leads, so that's what's populating uh, the data in this visualization. So there's a lot of things going on here, um, but on this first tab, you can see the leads by month over time. You can see how when the Excelsior Scholarship announcement went out uh, in April and May last year, those leads were very high, um, and you can see you know, over time. You can also see using, looking at the bar chart, that, the, the, um, that we received the most amount of leads for bachelor's degrees. Um, and we see, receive a lot of leads for master's degrees as well. Um, the pie chart shows you what degree the students already had. So on the inquiry form, it asks what, what degree they already have. So you can see the proportion who only have a high school diploma, those who have some college credits, and earned associates, and earned bachelors, so on and so forth. Yes? So the leads? Individual schools. So uh, enrollment services, so Megan Dynan and Tyler Lowell, um, they're the ones that manage the process through, and I think it's through a platform called Campus Connect. And other folks in the room might know this better than I do. I think, Greg, you were just looking at your leads. So <laughs> not that I was stalking your computer yeah, behind you, but <laughs> but you were, which is good. I was glad to say, I was like, I, let, I know that spreadsheet. <laughs> um, so the campuses are receiving them. If you're not, somehow we can, again, we can make that connection and make sure that that's happening for you. Absolutely, because the whole purpose is that you're able to do things with these leads. Um, so yeah, we definitely want to make sure that's happening. Um, but the purpose of the dashboard is to be able to see what kind of insights we can get from these leads. So again, we know that we are receiving a lot of um, bachelor's and master's inquiries. So that might indicate to us that we need to develop more bachelor's and master's programs to meet the demand there. Um, again, you can filter by campus or campus type. You could click on a particular month, so maybe you only want to know about January. You could click on that data point there. You could look at January. You might want to know, I'm only interested in students who have an earned bachelor's degree. You can click on that piece of the pie, and you can see what those students are looking for. Um, same thing, you may want to know <clears throat> all the students who are looking for bachelor's degrees, what's the education that they have? Um, and interestingly, um, you know, 36% have some college credits, 37% have an associate's, that might be what you expect. Um, but yeah, you can, you can take a look and you can then just re-click on the same thing you clicked on to unclick it. Uh, there are also several tabs up at the top, so you can look at, so again, this is the main tab. There is a by degree level tab, and I know this looks kind of crazy right now, but if you filter it to your specific campus, it will look much more manageable. Basically what it is is it has all the different degree levels, and if you hover over a particular color, you can see what that specific program was and the number of inquiries that you got. So again, this looks really crazy right now, but if you filter it to your specific campus, it will be much more useful. You can also look by location, so that's the third tab. It shows where um, in the country, 
you have the greatest number of leads, so those bubbles, right, the larger the bubble is, um, the, the more inquiries we've received. You can zoom out, so you could look at um, all of the United States. We also have a chart here that shows um, international students and where they are, or how many they are and where they're from. And then the last tab, additional info, there are a couple other questions on the inquiry form. One asks if they are a, um, a veteran. One asks if they, like, why they're pursuing additional education. So is it career advancement? Is it to change career fields? Is it to complete a degree? Is it just for fun? Um, and then what kinds of questions they have. And then also we know the percentage of the program, uh, it, how much it is online. So is it a 50%? Can you be completed 50% online or 75 or 100? And we know that. We can connect that to the program. So we have um, that information here too. So most of our students are looking at 100% online programs, but we also know that 75% of our programs are 100% online, so that's not surprising. Okay. Any questions on the recruitment dashboard before I move on? Yeah. Sure. <clears throat> so if you select your own campus, then it still reviews yep. your enrollment tab to reflect the staff choice? It should. Let's double check though. <laughs> and I think I added a filter um, on the additional tabs just in case, but yes, it does. Great. Yes? Good question, Ian. So this comes in, um, I do get the lead data daily, but I only update this dashboard monthly. So generally the beginning of the month is when it will reflect the new month, and then you'll see the new dot for the next month. So that's a process through enrollment services, and um, I believe they do it through a platform called Campus Connect, and they do that on a daily basis. They basically upload those leads, and then there's a process by which someone in admissions or whoever the contact is can then download them on the campus. Does it ever choose No, it's all, it's all campuses. Um, you just need to have programs that are listed on the open.suny.edu website. Um, so that's what, you know, what students are inquiring about, so that's the only. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, um, Megan Dynan and Tyler Lowell. Yep, Dynan, D-I-N-A-N, and Tyler Lowell. L-O-W-E-L-L, -L -L. yeah. Yes, Ken. So I, I wanted to just mention that this Campus Connect system <coughs> is not just for the Open SUNY leads. It's the system that's used for enrollment services to share leads that they're getting for any program at SUNY with the campuses. So every campus has the ability to download. They do have a separate bucket for downloads for online programs. So um, if you want to have Lilia, for example, um, if you want to be able to access those online programs separately, you could work with your admissions office to get that access. Greg, did you want to add to that? That's exactly what Kim just said. <laughs> that, that is the process. Work with your admissions office and make sure that they have the application that can authorize you to have access to those resources. Wonderful. All right. So we're going to move on to online students, which is probably the most fun of the dashboards. So, um, so how do we define an online student is something that I when I first got here, when I first started, I asked because I wasn't really sure, like how do we define an online student, right? Are they taking all of their classes online? Are they taking some of their classes online? Is it their intent to be online? Um, so then we, um, you know, we looked nationally for definitions. We saw the iPads data, and like I said before, the iPads data classifies online student as those who are exclusively online and those who are some but not all online. So we decided to go along with that definition. So this dashboard shows you um, the number of students through SUNY who are exclusively online, some but not all online, and those who are not online, that number is there as well. But the, the um, uh, demographics below are actually just showing online students, so those who are exclusively and some. Uh, and interestingly, so as we were having the conversation prior about the percent of at least one course online, I recalculated it for fall 2016 because we just did like a rough estimate yesterday, to be honest. Um, and so it's actually 18.15% in fall 2016 of all of SUNY. But I figured since now we asked that question, you were all going to want to know what your percentage is. So again, if you go in here, you can filter by campus and your percentage will come up here for the fall. 
Now, keep in mind that this is just fall 2016 data, right? So it's not the full school year. And what we know is that many students take online classes in the winter and in the summer. So, um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Your percentage of students who are taking at least one online class for the entire year is definitely going to be larger. Like, that's definitely a fact. Um, but because of the way, because we want to look at demographics, we do have to pick a term to look at. And so we look at fall because that is what um, we report nationally as well. So what you'll see on here is um, a breakdown of undergraduate and graduate, full-time, part-time, male, female. Um, I defined a category as adult learner of 25 or uh, older as a yes, no adult learner category, but we could look at age more specifically if, if that's something you're interested in. Um, whether or not they're a Pell recipient, if they have a veteran status, and what their race ethnicity is. And again, can be filtered by campus or campus type. You also could look, if you want to look just at your exclusively online students, you could click that part of the bar chart, <laughs> and all of the other charts will change. Yes? Is there a way to get data about, let's say, students at my home institution who are taking courses through Open SUNY, and Open SUNY students who are taking online courses at my so students who are taking courses at other institutions other than your own. Um, at this point, we don't have a, an easy mechanism for that, um, but I'll definitely take note of that. And it, it's, a, it, it's a little interesting. You can kind of, so through this, not through this one, there's a different one though where I have home institution. Oh, that's on a <laughs> enrollment roundtable visualization. I'm confusing myself now. Sorry, talking out loud. Um, through these visualizations, no. But we can definitely think more about that and how we can get that data for you. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great suggestion. Um, at least for the students who are coming to your campus who are not your home institution status. Yeah. Can yeah. I ask that when you ask a question, you okay. press the little button next to your mic and talk into the mic so everyone can hear you? <laughs> Thanks. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep moving though because there's a lot to get through. So, so this one has, again, um, your online students, those who are exclusively online, those who are some but not all, you can filter by campus, you can filter by campus type. There's an additional tab that has residency specifically um, so it shows the United States. We apparently don't have students from North Dakota and South Dakota um, <laughs> or Nebraska. It's just not happening apparently. Um, so maybe we need to recruit there. Um, and it also breaks it down by uh, New York State, other international, so on and so forth. So you can again filter that by your campus and then just notes about the data source. So um, I didn't say this yet, but I'll probably say it another five times. If your term section data, so if that course section indicator is not accurate on your campus, so if you have 15 online courses but you're reporting them all as not online, none of this data will be correct because that is how we determine online student status. We pull all of the students, we say how many courses were they taking and how many were they taking online, right? And if none of your courses are flagged as online, then it's going to show that they were all not online. So that is a very important um, uh, note. <laughs> um, and so if you are looking through this and it is wildly incorrect based on your own knowledge of your campus, then we need to have a conversation to see if that is the source of the issue. Okay. There's another online student visualization, but it's called online enrollment academic year. And it's just, it's a little bit different. Again, it doesn't have the demographics, but this one is showing trends over time. And this is showing, again, exclusively online, some but not all online. But the chart at the bottom is breaking it down a little further if you're interested in. If you're interested in who is 1 to 49.99%, who's 50 to 74.99, and so on and so forth. So it breaks it down more specifically if you're interested in that. Um, so again, this is just showing trends. It does not have demographics, but it does have at least one course over the, over the span of the year. So it's not fall data, right? Because you probably also want to know that number of how many students are taking at least one online course. So like we said before, there are about 80,000 students taking at least one online course across SUNY in a fall term, but for the academic year, that number expands to 140, uh, 177,000. 
right? So a big difference and it's something that might be significant to you. So that's where why this visualization exists. But that takes a lot more um, effort on the back end at SUNY to calculate. So that's why it doesn't have um, as much information, but it, it is there for you. Okay, so online course sections. So if you looked at the online student data and you thought it does not seem accurate, my next um, suggestion to you would be to come to the online course sections data visualization and take a look at that. Because that's where you can very easily, or a little more easily, compare the data on your campus and the data that we have. So this breaks it out in how many online course sections there are in the summer, the fall, the winter, and the spring. You see um, a bar chart here. And then it just goes through um, a couple of different uh, visualizations. So online course sections by campus type. We can see that community colleges have um, over half of our online sections. We can look at it um, by campus. Empire State has a lot of our online sections. We can look at it by instruction type. So we know that um, about 89% of our courses are asynchronous. And we can look at it by course level. And of course, lower division, 65% of our courses are lower division. Not surprising since community colleges have half of our <laughs> course section. So there's just additional ways for you to look at the data. And again, you can filter it by campus and campus type. Any questions about that? So a new one that you, if you've been on this website before, you probably wouldn't have seen this because I just added it recently, is online registrations and credits. So we've been talking about, when we first introduced the data for online students, I got some questions about registrations. And um, registrations we can define as the number of students that are signed up for an online course, but in um, a duplicated headcount, essentially. So if they're in five classes, we're counting them five times because there are five registrations for that um, online course. So these numbers will be larger um, for, for that purpose. I don't know, did I not put a title on this? Okay, so here's the, the terms. Yeah, so it's by summer, fall, winter, spring are these bars across the bottom. And we have it by course type. And then we have, um, so course type overall, so the gray bar is the not online courses. And then we have it just for the online courses. We have it by the type, so asynchronous, synchronous, or combined. Um, and then down below, we have a count by part-time, full-time, and residency. And then the second tab on here, it looks exactly the same, but rather than registrations, it's number of credits. So counting all of those credits. So this might be meaningful to you if you are trying to figure out, especially for a fall, I mean, I'm sorry, for a summer or a winter term, right? If students, if undergraduate students are paying per credit um, or per course, this data may be useful to you in predicting um, you know, monetary amounts. Yes? Would it be possible to plot data as a unit for a fall and then different Yeah, so so course completion <laughs> percentages. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. So I, I actually have a visualization for course completion for yeah, course completion. It's not on this list yet because we're still revising it a bit, but yeah, we can definitely have, because we can we know credits attempted and credits earned, so we can definitely look at that. Yeah, for this one, it's credits attempted, so it's a good distinction. This is credits attempted because you're going to get the money for credits attempted, so that's what, uh, you know, what it's for. Any other questions about registrations and credits? Is that clear? Does that make sense, the, the registrations term rather than number of students? I hope that differentiation makes sense. All right, online programs. Again, this data is coming from the online programs that are listed on the Open SUNY website. Um, and you can see here the number of programs we have by degree type. Associates are more than half of our programs are at the associates level. Like I said before, 75% of our programs are 100% online. You can scroll through this list. Now, of course, you could go to the open.suny.edu website and you could find this information, um, but I think that this you know, puts it in a way that might be a little more easy to read if you were just trying to see like how many programs already exist online in a particular area, you should be able to use this dashboard to get that information. 
Um, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's fun. Online faculty. Um, so just one note about online faculty. From what I've learned, uh, there may be some discrepancies with community college data because that data is not automatically funneled through SUNY HR. They have to report it separately. Um, so there may be some discrepancies with rank um, and things like that. But, uh, but this data shows um, are the number of faculty members teaching online. So either they're teaching, again, all of their courses online or some but not all of their courses online, and you can look at that by term. So we have all the, fall, the previous fall terms, previous winter terms, spring terms, and summer terms. Um, and you can see that those numbers are growing, right? So I put the not, the not online is the gray bar. I put it on top so you could see the growth in the online courses. Um, and again, you can filter. So if you want to look at just full professors, you can click there. If you want to look at just um, lectures, you could click there and it, and it will change, right? Or maybe you wanted to look at all full-time faculty, you could click that. You could take a look there as well. So again, just some more ways to investigate. Maybe you're trying to make an argument for resources. Um, you know, if you can look at trends that say the amount of, of instructors teaching online is growing, maybe that can help you with your argument. All right, and then last on this page is the just a link to the annual impact report, which um, myself and Kim were handing out earlier. So you all should have a copy of the annual impact report, which has some of this data along with other data about Open SUNY services as well. So we encourage you to take a look. And um, and if you ever have any feedback about any of these visualizations, please let me know. It is always a work in progress. Um, I want to make sure this is something that's useful to you. Um, so if you have any suggestions. I, yeah, I really do want to make it useful for you, so please let me know. My email address is on the website as well, so you can take a look at that. Um, go back into my PowerPoint, because I only have a couple minutes left. These are all that we showed. Okay, so you may also have campus-specific data. You may have online program codes, right? So you may have an academic program, and you have a separate code for the, the on-campus version and the, um, and the online version. Um, so you may have the ability to count online completions a lot more easily than we do because when that data is all rolled up to SUNY, uh, students are within a particular academic program and it doesn't differentiate between whether it's online or not. So you actually may have the ability to um, get an additional insight that I don't. You may also have information about um, the applicant. So as they apply for a program, you may have a checkbox in your application that asks if they're intending to be an online student. Great. Um, that would be good information for you to have. And again, you can get additional insights from that. You, of course, may have other online student leads or inquiries. So we have what's coming through the openstudio.edu website. But you have other sources of marketing. So you may be getting leads and inquiries in other ways. So you'd want to add that. Um, data to your insights about prospective students. Um, early term enrollment, oh, I should, this is important actually, I should note that the IPEDS data, when your institutional, uh, institutional research officers are reporting that for the fall term, they're actually reporting that in early term submissions. So they're reporting it in about October. Um, and the data that I'm reporting back to you from SUNY is actually end of term, so after the term has ended, that's when the data is submitted. So there will always be little discrepancies um, between numbers because there are going to be some students who are added or who leave. However, it should be fairly similar. Um, there should not be huge discrepancies. So early term, so you'll have early term um, data. So if your institutional research offices are sharing something with you um, and you look at it and it seems kind of different than ours, that could be a reason for that. Um, and of course, SUNY is collecting, and just to make this distinction, SUNY is collecting early term data as well, but we don't collect course section early term data, but you have access to that because your registrar office has all the students' registration information. Um, there could be other course classifications. So I don't know where Canton is, but I'm looking at you for flex courses. I'm not sure how that's being you know, put into our scheme of asynchronous, synchronous, or combined. Um, so those are additional conversations you know, that we may need to have. I don't know if there's other campuses out there that have other types of um, courses. So those types of things you may have access to on your campus um, that you're mapping up to SUNY in a particular way. Um, you will probably have records of online faculty training that we don't have at SUNY, and access to other online course data through your LMS. You may have that access that we don't have. 
and of course um, your actual applicant data, um, who's actually applying to campus uh, for your online program. That's something that I've uh, engaged with admissions operations folks to try to collect, to try to understand student, Open SUNY's marketing efforts through our website, uh, but you have actual access to it. So, or in theory, you have a little bit easier access to it than I do um, at this level. So, so those are some additional uh, sources of data that you have. So again, I cannot um, emphasize enough that the accuracy of term section CRS data is essential. So if your course types are not being accurately flagged, uh, then we can't really look at how many online students you have because we don't know that they're taking online classes. Um, so that is huge. And, and as I've been discovering any discrepancies and trying to work with campuses, but if you discover any discrepancies, you know, feel free to talk to your registrars or your institutional research folks. Um, and you can you know, feel free to bring me in on those conversations too if you'd like. Uh, we really want to make sure the data is as accurate as possible. Um, student, so online student intent, like I said before, is a brand new um, student population code that we just implemented last fall. And from the data we've collected so far, not looking very accurate so I, we know that it will take some time to get there but what it basically means is that you need to have a mechanism on your campus for knowing which students are intending to be online so you may do that by having a box on your application that they check maybe when they register for their major they're saying that they're intending to be online maybe um, they let's see what was I gonna say maybe they um, I just lost what I was going to say. So they could check they could check a box somewhere on something that said they're planning to be online, right? Um, or maybe you're making contact with students who are taking a certain amount of online classes, and that's how you're seeing that they're intending to be online. Um, so you need to have some way of knowing that, and we recognize that that takes some effort. But it's really important to know because when we're talking about effort, you know um, recruitment efforts and trying to increase enrollment. We only know after the fact how many online students there are. We don't really have the ability right now to say we recruited X number of new online students. The only way we would know that is through that online intent indicator. Um, and, it, and another piece of that is even when we're talking about exclusively online students, they could be a student who in that fall term just decided to go home and take one class online. Right? They are being counted as an exclusively online student. But did they, are they intending to be an online student, right? Or did they just happen to go home and take one online course? So this indicator can help us make that differentiation, and that's why it's really important. Yes, uh, You know, I think aside from the data piece of this, which is important, I think there also are implications from, for services. Yeah. So, you know, we know that the majority of students in SUNY who are taking online courses are blending online and face-to-face. -face. But if, you know, your institution is interested in um, attracting more fully online students, then there are implications for services, and you're going to want to know when that number of students is increasing versus yeah. not. So, so I think there's lots of implications of this, and there, as Kristen was mentioning, there are multiple ways in which you can be capturing and tracking this information. Um, and we've talked with some campuses about this. So, if you're, if that's a question that you have and you want to talk about that, please, um, you know, ask Kristen or me, and we'd be happy to chat with you about that. Um, and then, of course, definitions and calculations have to be consistent. So if we're defining, yes, oh, yes, go ahead. The other in implication is NCSAR. And yeah. so we really have to know where our students are at all times, regardless of where they um, state in the initial application. So it, it also has that ramification as well. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and so again, in terms of data accuracy, we have to be defining things in similar ways, or at least mapping things. So if you are defining something differently on your campus, knowing that the way, knowing how I'm defining something or calculating something will at least be helpful if you do find discrepancies and being able to account for them. Um, we have some, we have found discrepancies between IPEDS data and SUNY data, and I shared that with the Open SUNY Plus teams recently, but I am gonna be reaching out to campuses who did have big discrepancies to talk more about that. Um, being aware of you know, the differences between registrations and unduplicated headcounts of students, those are gonna be two very different numbers, right? So just keeping those things in mind. And again, connecting with your institutional research staff and or registrar to talk about these things, uh, we really encourage that. Uh, and if you have any internal reports that you've already created, just seeing how they align with the dashboards, you know, just, just check it out. And if it doesn't, contact me or speak with someone in IR or the registrar 
and we just want to make sure that we have things aligned as best as possible because in my role, if I'm being tasked with understanding the impact of online learning for SUNY, it's a little difficult if the data is not you know, um, available in a way that makes sense. <laughs> um, but in terms of next steps, this is my last slide. I know I'm, I'm holding you over a little bit. Um, we, we, we're going to start reporting that online student intent data. Like I said, it's going to take a little while probably to become uh, reliable, but we'll start looking at that. It will allow us to track online enrollment based on students' intentions and minimize some of those assumptions about the exclusively online students. We were looking, we've been looking a little more recently about online completers or how many students are completing their programs online, right? Seems like a really obvious question, but uh, it, it does require uh, quite a bit of calculations to figure out. Um, and I did share uh, some preliminary data with uh, the Doodle group, so I'm just waiting on some <coughs> feedback about that. And then if we think that's good, then I can definitely share that out with everyone. Um, and again, we want to just be able to make use the data to make decisions at the campus and the SUNY level. Um, you know, the data is also being used for, for research um, purposes as well. So it's just really important for us to have um, data that's accurate. And I know you have a million other things to think about in terms of the actual facilitation of online learning. Um, so it's not something that's always at the forefront of your mind. but. Uh, and not something that you're even responsible for sometimes, right? Because it's the institutional research folks that are submitting it or the registrar, but being aware that it is existing. And you know, if, if data is being reported to iPads and it's inaccurate, it's being used in national reports and a lot of places. So we really want to make sure that it is accurately reflecting the state of online learning because that's what we're using to make a lot of decisions. So that's it. That's the data. This dog is for Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? So does anyone have any questions? <laughs> yes. Kristen, you're using summer and winter terms as well as fall and spring, right? Yes, for... Um, core sections? For core sections, yes. And then does summer lead or tail? So that's a great question. And it, um, it varies on every campus. So uh, the... The academic year trends chart that I that I put up actually accounts for what your campus does in terms of the summer semester. In terms of the course section data um, that I put up for uh, for an academic year, but separated by term, I have the previous summer just because I'm able to then update it quicker because I'm not waiting for summer. Because um, just so everyone's aware, also because like I said, it's the end of term data. If your term ends in December. Your data is due in February, but not everyone gets it in until maybe March, right? So it takes a little while to, to get the data. Um, so I've been using the prior summer. And in the impact reports, it uses the prior summer just because it's a little quicker to obtain. But in the cases where I do that, it, it is specified that those are the terms. Um, and like I said, in that academic year enrollment trends visualization, they actually, institutional research calculated that by the actual academic year that you have set, whether that has summer in the front or in the back. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Data, yay? <laughs> Data, yay. Lunch, yay? <laughs> all right, well, thank you all very much. And if you ever have any questions, please let me know. Definitely dog yay and definitely data yay. Um, I think um, it's uh, we're a little bit we're running a little bit ahead of schedule, but that's good because we have a little bit more time for lunch. Um, and so lunch, I think, uh, if you go out the doors and to the left, there will be uh, food there, and we will.